in the last video we have seen the structure of the heart so now we understand about the various parts of the heart like the auricles ventricle sinus venosus and the truncus arteriosus so now let us try to understand how the working of the heart takes place so first of all the heart pumps the blood to the various parts of the body so this is what we understand right so the contraction of the heart is called as a systole and the relaxation is called as the diastole and one systole and one diastole make up a single heartbeat so when the sinus venosus fills up with blood the now this blood is the deoxygenated blood so which is got through the pre cables and the post cable right so uh, uh, this deoxygenated blood is poured into the right auricle through the valve that is a sino auricular valve and ultimately the deoxygenated blood comes into the right auricle and the left auricle receives the blood through the pulmonary vein and uh, so the pulmonary vein opens into the left auricle by an aperture right so in other words the right auricle uh, receives the deoxygenated blood and the left auricle receives the oxygenated or the pure blood next uh, the sino auricular node or the uh, pacemaker initiates the contract uh, contraction of the right auricle so this specialized part from where the contractions begin is called the myogenic pacemaker and such a heart uh, with a myogenic pacemaker is called as a myogenic heart so the auricles then contract so ultimately the the deoxygenated blood from the right auricle comes to the right side of the ventricle and the oxygenated blood from the left auricle comes into the left uh, left side of the ventricle and the middle part of the ventricle now is occupied by the mixed blood because certain amount of mixing takes place as there is no uh, um, septa to uh, to uh, to separate the two types of blood so ultimately you find that the ventricle has three types of blood oxygenated deoxygenated and the mixed blood and then the ventricle contracts the ventricle contracts and the blood goes into the truncus arteriosus which is a bulbous structure opening on to the right side of the ventricle and the uh, blood is pumped uh, through the semilunar valves of the truncus arteriosus uh, to prevent and these prevent the backflow of blood into the ventricle and ultimately the blood reaches the uh, through the, the valves it reaches into the pulmocutaneum and uh, cavum pulmocutaneum and ultimately from this uh, it goes to the pulmocutaneous arch uh, uh, and carried to the lungs and the skin for oxygenation now the pilangium uh, contracts so one is once it contracts it pulls the spiral valve towards the uh, wall uh, of the pilangium and therefore the the cavum aorticum becomes larger and the mixed blood rushes into the cavum aorticum and ultimately reaches the systemic arch and systemic arch carries the blood to the various parts of the viscera but uh, this mixed blood is not allowed into the carotid arch because of an obstruction which is in form of a labyrinth next you find that the ventricle through the ventricle you find that the uh, the pure oxygenated blood uh, goes into the carotid arch to be carried to the various parts present in the anterior part of the animal's body like the brain head etc so in other words you find in other words you find that the flow of blood is regulated by the spiral valve in the truncus arteriosus and there are three types of blood according to this particular mechanism that is the pure blood which is taken to the carotid arch the the mixed blood which is taken to the systemic arch and the impure blood which is taken to the pulmocutaneous arch so this is the basis of the classical theory which was put forward by brook in 1858 so this was brook's classical theory 
which believed in the three types of blood that is pure impure and the mixed blood now there's another theory known as the modern theory which was followed by van der waal in 1933 and foxen in 1953 now these two scientists conducted a couple of experiments and they found uh, the, uh, independently that it was the mixed blood which uh, which is taken to the various parts of the body now um, first of all van der waal injected indian ink into the sinus venosus and he collected Uh, a blood sample from the sinus venosus then he collected subsequently he collected samples from the three arches and he found that indian ink was present in all the blood samples of the arches which goes to show that some amount of mixed um, um, mixing of the blood takes place similarly the next scientist foxon he uh, was able um, foxon uh, injected uh, thorium dioxide into the pulmonary vein and he also collected blood samples uh, from all over the body and he found that the blood samples collected from various parts of the body had thorium dioxide compound which goes to show that thorium uh, that uh, there is some kind of mixing of the blood and uh, but certain mechanisms are still not explained it is not ex- uh, known as to why uh, in certain subsequent studies it was found that uh, the carotid arch gets uh, a blood which is rich in oxygen content why as to why this happens we do not understand and uh, uh, some amount of uh, understanding is there Uh, and we believe that the blood which is received from the pulmonary vein is has a lower oxygen content as uh, that blood which is purified in the buccal cavity and the skin so today we have studied about the mechanism of the working of the heart and we have also understood about the classical and the modern theories of circulation